Hello everybody, welcome to Zanzan live stream show. I have the pleasure tonight to have with me Eleni Nota from Nervosa. Hi Eleni. Hello, thank you for having me. Hello everyone. Thank you, you for uh, joining us. Thank you, thank you for being with us on uh, Zanzana live stream show. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, for us uh, to uh, have you with us. So before we begin the interview, let's uh, recall uh, who is uh, Nervosa. So um, Nervosa, um, it's uh, a band who, okay, come on, go. Yeah, it doesn't want, uh, yeah, come on. Okay, the live stream, the, the, okay, the slide, it's okay, here we are. Okay, it's Prika Amaral from uh, on guitar, it's uh, Mia Wallace on bass, uh, Nervosa, it's uh, Diva Satanica on vocals, and Eleni Nota on drums. Um, the albums, the previous albums of Nervosa demo in 2012, Time of Death, it was an EP on uh, 2012. Victim of Yourself on uh, 2014. Uh, Agony in uh, 2016. Uh, Down of Mankind in uh, 2018. And uh, Perpetual Chaos on 2021, an album uh, who is uh, now here from uh, nine days ago, I think. Uh, the uh, songs uh, on the album Perpetual Chaos, um, so 13 songs, Venonymous, uh, Guided by Evil, uh, People of the Abyss, uh, Perpetual Chaos, uh, Until the Very End, the Genocidal Command, the Kings of the Domination, um, Time to uh, Fight, Godless uh, Prisoners, uh, Prisoner, uh, Blood Eagle, Rebel Cell, Pursued by Judgment, and uh, under runes. Uh, so here we go for the interview with uh, Eleni. Eleni, um, once again, uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, being uh, with us. So um, we know that there's uh, a new um, Nervous has completely changed, uh, um, and uh, you, you are one of the new. Um, drummer of, um, of, uh, of, um, of uh, Nervosa. Um, how was the casting? How did you, how did you meet with, um, how, how you, you've been chosen? Um, so uh, from what Prika told me, um, uh, when the previous members left Nervosa uh, in April uh, 2020, uh, she had to find yeah. new members, and it was during uh, the quarantine. So her only way to find people was internet, and uh, she already knew us uh, either from Instagram or from other gigs. Um, for example, she knew Diva because her band uh, Black Hunter had supported Nervosa a while ago, so she knew Diva Satanica in person. She knew Mia Wallace because. Well, everyone knows Mia Wallace, is really well known in the metal community. And uh, she knew me from uh, Instagram, actually, because she had seen one of my drum covers and she remembered me because she, she liked it or something. So she sent us an email if we were interested in auditioning. Of course, we said yes. Uh, and that's how everything began for us. We auditioned, she accepted us as the new members. And we actually met in person in the studio in Malaga in August, where we went to record Perpetual Chaos. Yeah, but uh, how was the audition? Because uh, we know uh, Mia is in uh, is in Brazil. You are uh, in uh, in Greece, Athens. And um, how how was the audition? It was it was Skype. It was how is yeah, how was it? Skype. Skype. Uh, yeah. We used Skype. It was our only means to communicate. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I played a couple of songs. We spoke a lot because we wanted to get uh, to know us. Um, yeah, and uh, one part of the audition was to compose uh, drum parts for one of the new songs so Prika uh, could see, you know, how my ideas work and uh, you know how i can adapt my own style to nervosa and fun fact this song came uh, came to be venomous 
So when I was was part of our audition, and it's actually the first song of the album. Yeah, and um, okay, um, um, I I I, I please uh, tell everyone that it's uh, looking at us to to go to see your um, your Instagram um, account because uh, in Instagram you make uh, a lot of uh, playthrough of uh, of songs and. Um, the music that you that you make play through it's not uh, not really a thrash or uh, or or death metal it's like uh, things like uh, bring me uh, the horizon or a more modern thing you know uh, um, but um, when we see you it's uh, it's very um, um, how we say impressionant uh, it's uh, something that you you we look and we say oh okay that's uh, <laughs> But 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 it was not uh, thrash. So she uh, maybe um, she 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 took um, a risk, you know, or was she uh, looking for someone who has a different sonority? Um, actually, the the drum cover she saw and uh, the one she liked was a drum cover for Slipknot. So you know, it was a more uh, closer to Nervosa style. Yeah, I don't think uh, Bring the Horizon really. Uh, you know, uh, impression freak or something. I think she liked uh, the uh, sleep note drum cover, yeah. Uh, yeah, because you know it has a lot of tough drumming, but yeah, definitely was a risk for her because apart from sleep note, most of my drum covers are you know metal core or I have some pop uh, drum covers, so I wasn't you know the typical choice for a thrust band, but yeah, I don't know what she saw, she probably liked something. And uh, I told her in the um, when we spoke that I haven't played Russ ever in my life before joining Nervosa, uh, but she trusted me. She trusted me a lot that I could do this, and yeah, I worked a lot after I joined Nervosa to adapt to the thrust style. Okay, so um, um, who is uh, with us? Uh, there's um, Khal Trabelsi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Khaled. Hello. Uh, hello. Emin Nouri and Nervosa. Sheba Rossi, we love you, Nervosa, the voice of anger and madness. Uh, hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> and um, Enis Habib, hello. I, uh, speaking of drum parts, uh, tell us about how you compose your drum parts. Also, um, do the other uh, player give you something ready and uh, at your touch? Uh, maybe big, okay. You took this uh, this question. Uh, we are going um, back to, to to this question, but uh, um, the other risk that that uh, took Nervosa is uh, that um, Eleni Nota is the drummer. You you took your, your diploma in uh, 2014. Um, you don't have a huge experience. Uh, you play very well, but. Uh, you don't have, um, you know, the, uh, the um, a very, very big experience of uh, of scene and thing like that. And going in a band like uh, like Nervosa, wow, it was a risk for her and for you even. Um, it was a big challenge. Uh, yes, definitely. As you said, I don't have that much experience compared to the other girls. Um, you know, the newbie of the band. Uh, yeah, because okay, I got my diploma and after that I played a couple of shows, I, I played on some tours, but they were not, you know, the big tours that Nervosa do. I have recorded some albums, but it's not like I have this huge discography or something. So I guess, yes, it was a risk for Prika. And I, this is one of the reasons I say to, to her thank you all the time, because she took a risk with me. You know, Mia Wallace was guaranteed that she would do this perfectly because she has this, this huge career behind her. Diva Satanica as well, but me, it was a risk and she trusted me and, you know, uh, I hope I did her justice. But for me, it was a risk as well because I was really scared getting into this. Um, I, you know, I just packed a couple of suitcases and I headed to Spain in a place where I knew nobody, I didn't even, even speak the language, and I had to record an entire album with people I have I hadn't met in my life before. But I don't know, maybe karma or something, but uh, it all worked perfectly. So I'm happy that we both, me and Brika, took this risk. 
Yeah. And um, how was the uh, the meeting with you and uh, and um, and Mia Wallace? Because um, bass and drums it's something very important in a band, and uh, you, you have to um, to speak maybe the the same language um, musically. Yes, uh, actually, um, uh, me and Mia. You know, communicate perfectly musically and uh, in the personal level. Uh, so, you know, I wrote first my drum parts and then she wrote her bass parts. So it's like she clicked on my playing, which is amazing. She instantly, you know, liked my parts and she played on top of them and uh, it was a perfect match. And uh, yeah, we had this, we have this weird kind of communication where You know, even in the personal level, I speak to her in Greek and she answers to me in Italian and we actually understand each other. So I don't know, maybe our minds communicate in a weird way or something. So it also translates to the playing aspect. Our, you know, our communication is perfect in the personal and the playing part as well. Yeah, because we, um, uh, there's a Brazilian, um, a Spanish, an Italian, and uh, a Greek, um, yes. and uh, okay, three Latins and um, and a Greek. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, I'm the problem of this band. <laughs> 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 Because I speak in the most weird language in the world, probably, you know, the three other girls understand each other pretty much, but, you know, Greek is like a different story. <laughs> but thankfully, we, we all speak English. <laughs> Yeah, of course. And um, so you, you, you took your, uh, your bag and uh, went to Malaga and um, you came to this, uh, um, to this studio where you, where you lived and um, you just... How when uh, the, the, the glass, where you, you broke the glass, when? What was the time where the, the, the glass was broken? At the end of the second day, uh, the first yeah. day I arrived, uh, it was only Rika and Martin, Martin Furia, our producer. So it was just me and them for the first week in order to finish my drum parts and then the other girls came. So in the first day, you know, I arrived in the afternoon. So, you know, we just hung out a bit. Uh, we didn't do any playing. Uh, in, uh, in the second day, we set up everything. Uh, Martin tuned the drums. And then we began. Uh, in the first song, I was scared a lot. <laughs> you know, I was like a little kid in the first day of school or something. Um, and they all, the first song I actually recorded was Godless Prisoner. And I was really scared. Uh, in the beginning, my arms and my feet were shaking. But um, the second song I did was Time to Fight. We did it in the evening of the second day in Malaga. And this song changed everything, I think. This was a time that the glass broke because, I don't know, it, this song really fitted into my playing. So I recorded it pretty quickly and correctly. We just did one or two takes and it was complete. And after that, I felt so confident because Prika and Martin were so happy and they were telling me, oh, you did perfectly, we love your playing and this made me feel so well with myself that the glass broke. And after that, everything was like a machine. I just entered the studio every morning and the songs were finished. Yeah. Um, did you know the, the song before going to, to Malaga? Um, the, uh, how, is, how was it? Uh, you, uh, there's a process of a pr the process of writing uh, the songs, uh, the composing, um, Did, did, did it begin before or was it in Malaga? Uh, it began before. Uh, Brika yeah. uh, wrote most of the album. Uh, about 70% of the album is Brika. Um, and she did a pre-production from her house. So we had the basic structure of every song. The only song that was written in the studio was Rebel Soul. Apart from that, everything was pretty much ready. Uh, so yeah, when I headed to the studio, I knew the structure for most of the songs. Uh, of course, we changed a, a lot of stuff uh, with Martin, you know, because some 
some things work better when you try them out. But yeah, uh, this is how it worked. When I went to the studio, I knew pretty much what I wanted to play. Uh, did you listen to the Rosa before joining them? Uh, did you went to to their uh, concert before? Uh... Did you know who, who was Nervosa? <laughs> yeah, I knew who was Nervosa. You know, if you... And Nervosa is pretty huge everywhere in the world, but especially yeah. if you are a female musician, you know, you have to know them because there are very few people in the world that do what Prika does. Having an all-female thrust band that plays in big stages, it's a huge accomplishment. So I think every woman in, every, uh, woman in metal has Nervosa as a role model. Uh, because Prika's work is really impressive, but I I hadn't seen them live ever uh, because uh, Nervosa hasn't come to Greece, um, so I didn't have the chance to see them live. But yeah, I was listening to their albums for years. Okay, uh, so um, she had uh, a very huge fan of Nervosa. She loves a lot Nervosa, and he says. Uh, uh, why your music always talk about devil, evil faces, and blood? Uh, actually, we don't talk about the devil. If you see our lyrics, uh, none of the songs in the Perpetual Chaos speak about devil. They speak uh, mostly about political issues uh, uh, and you know about uh, depression or fanatism or animal abuse. Uh, so we actually don't have any song speaking about Satanism or the devil. Uh, yeah. The flow, do you know, it's metal. It's like you need blood to play metal. It's part of the act. <laughs> it's a must. If you don't have uh, blood, you're not metal enough. Um, and he says, Elinota, can you tell us the story of uh, Perpetual Chaos and who is the songwriter? Um, the songwriter is Brig Amaral, the main songwriter. Uh, all the credits go to her, and uh, a story. Uh, we have a lot of stories, actually. Um, okay, uh, the coolest story is uh, from when we filmed the video clip for "Guided by Evil." Uh, yeah. yeah, because okay, the the band uh, the band performance parts. Okay, we filmed them at night in the middle of nowhere. But after we filmed the performance part, we have we had to film the concept part where the ritual happened with all the blood and stuff. Uh, and it was already pretty late at night. It was around 1 or 2 a.m. when we started filming the concept. And we had to go in a small forest that in order to go there, we had to climb down an entire hill. And... Um, it was pretty hard because it was just rocks everywhere. And uh, me and Mia Wallace, we are very tiny people. We're really short. So we couldn't possibly walk down the hill. We would fall on our faces, break everything. So Prika, who is a really strong woman in spirit and in body, she actually carried us. She, she pulled us from the waist up and she carried us all down the hill like we were small children. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yes. And then we ended up, you know, uh, four women covered in fake blood in the middle of nowhere in a forest, really late at night, uh, you know, playing a, a fake coven with fake blood. And the crew, we covered them in blood as well. We were throwing blood at the crew. So it was like, it was like a weird blood party <laughs> down the hill. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, this is the same story from Perpetual Chaos. Um, so, uh, something is here and said, uh, Benna, Benna, Benna in uh, Tunisian, it means um, mm, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so let's uh, go back to um, Anna's habit question. Uh, speaking about drum parts, tell us a bit about how you compose your drum parts. Uh, also, uh, do the other uh, player give you uh, something ready and um, you add your touch? Um, cool question, actually. Thank you. Uh, so the way I compose my drum part is kind of weird. I don't know many people that do it this way. When someone sends me a song, you know, if it has just guitars or probably also it could have 
a basic uh, drum programming for me to have as a guideline. I take out my notebook and uh, I listen to the song uh, three or four times and I write uh, down with a pencil everything, uh, all the drum parts like a, a, like a party tour, a complete party tour with uh, detailed fills and everything. So it's like a full composition, but on the drum set. And then after I write down everything, I go to my practice room and I play the song. I do a couple of changes. If a drum fill doesn't work, I try something different. But everything actually for me begins on the paper. Uh, I don't I don't jam drum parts that often. I think a lot before I start playing. I think and I write down and then I go to play. Um, so this is my way. It's not the right way or something. Uh, every, uh, for everyone, something different works. And um, yeah, about the second uh, part of your question. Yes, I do it uh, a lot of times when someone sends me a song with, um, you know, a drum guide and the drum guide, it's kind of decent and I don't have to throw it away. I keep it and I just add some of my thoughts and my style on top of it. And I, you know, make it more from a drummer's point of view playing. So yes, I hope I answered your question correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you did. And um, when you, you, when you um, wrote your, your parts for this album and went to Malaga, um, was everything okay, or you you changed something, or you you had to um, you have, maybe they told you not okay, um, this is too much. Maybe um, uh, play a little less, uh, less symbols. I don't know, less uh, less rhythm, or no, you can uh, you can add something more uh, in here. How was it? Um, many things changed when I went to Malaga because uh, when you're working with a producer, you know you know that many things will change in the studio um and uh yes because some of the um, structures of the song change uh for example in pursuit by judgment we change an entire section of the song so i had to change my drum parts as well and also you know prika was in the studio all the time and because she's the main songwriter uh, while listening to me she was thinking of new stuff and for example, in People of the Abyss, he told me, okay, I want the drum solo in the middle. So I played the drum solo instantly. Or in Guided by Evil, in the solo, guitar solo part, she told me, I want more fills. I want, uh, you know, m more drumming in general. Uh, they never told me to play less. Actually, I had a few instances where they asked me to play more, but uh, they never asked me to play less. <laughs> Right. And um, recording your part is one thing, okay? And after, when you, when you hear the album for the first time, how was your feeling? I was actually really emotional. I've never yeah. been emotional about an album before, but um, I was really emotional when I listened to it. Uh, it, was, it was a beautiful feeling. Because I, you know, I listen to everything from beginning to end. I pay attention to every uh, small detail about me as bass and Diva's voice and Brika's guitar. And it was a beautiful feeling. And at the end of the listening session, I felt really proud about everyone and everything about this album. Okay. And um, did you feel uh, proud of yourself? Yes, actually. And... I don't feel this very often. I before professional chaos, you know, I didn't feel ever proud um, exactly. But um, it's the first time that I say I contributed at least a little bit to create an amazing album. And yeah, I had that moment where you know I told myself, "Okay, you did well, kid." <laughs> Something <laughs> like this. Yeah. Um, she have told you uh, your video by Napalm Records. Uh, congratulations. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, she Um What did you learn from uh, from that session? What did you learn uh, yourself from uh, um, th that moment that you uh, you spent, you lived in Malaga? 
what yeah what did you learn um the most important thing i learned is that my brain is my biggest enemy <laughs> and wow. yes uh because uh martin uh, did the most important thing in that studio he unlocked my brain and when that happened i played a lot of stuff that i didn't know i could play so it's like a, it's a, it's the proof that your limitation is not your body or your abilities it's your brain uh, i do it and most many people do it i criticize myself all the time like you can't do it it's too much for you it's too difficult for you you're not there yet and when i do this i actually make my body believe that i can't do it so my body doesn't follow and i can't play some stuff but when martin you know encouraged me to unlock my brain and push my limits i played speeds that i didn't know i could play and you know i turned out to be a really faster drummer than i thought i was yeah so yeah thanks to martin i realized i can do many stuff that i uh, that i never tried before yeah um question from ray uh, suriana what's your favorite drum kit and what kind of microphone do you use when you go record drum parts uh my favorite uh, drum kits are tama and uh for uh, my fa top favorite model of Tama is the Tama Superstar. Uh, this is actually the one I used in Malaga to record a Tama Su Superstar kit. And the microphones I use are sound hoops. Uh, also, we use sound hoops to record in Malaga. They are a really cool uh, company from Germany that makes uh, custom microphones for drums. Yeah. Are you on the Yes, Are from sound hoops, yes. Yes. Okay, and um, so the um, lots of time when you you go and you you play uh, something and you play on, on studio um, and you record an album. Um, do you think about how you could after play it on stage? Yes, and, um, also the time. Uh, we, and would you, um, the whole part that you played in uh, the, the jump parts that you played on the, the 13th song of, the, uh, of this album, um, do you think that uh, you can play them uh, the same, the, the, with the same, um, the same, I don't know, uh, gym, um, gym, uh, gym tube on stage? Uh, yes, and I always want to write drum parts that, you know, I can play exactly in the States. I don't want to, you know, um, and I have this uh, I'll, as a principle that I will try to play live 99% uh, of what I re recorded in the studio. Maybe I will change a couple of fills just because, you know, life happens and uh, something came up in my mind while I was playing and I wanted to try it on stage. But 99% of what I play is what is heard in the album. I have this as a principle. So when I enter the studio, I always want to write drum parts that I'm able to play live at any time. Uh, yeah, Venom will be kind of hard uh, actually to play live. But yeah, uh, with a lot of practice and a lot of stamina, I will do it. But it's a really hard song <laughs> to play yeah. live. <laughs> That's why, that, that's why the question. And uh, she had told you after Corona, come play, to, um, come play here in Tunisia and blow the stage. Uh, oh, really want to, really want to. I hope uh, we can come soon. Tell me, do you know Tunisia? Yes, I've never went, but uh, I know them as a country, yes. Yeah, uh, cool. I, I've heard it's one of the most beautiful countries, right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you, uh, if you come to Tunisia, you, you, you will feel yourself maybe a little bit like in Greece, you know. <laughs> Whoa, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, isn't it frustrating to uh, to join a band, to go to record uh, an album, to uh, to um, to become friend with uh, with the, other, the three other members of that band, and uh, after um, everything ends? You come back, everyone in your land, and uh, the album now is here. 
and uh, not to be with yourself, you know, um, joined, uh, going, you know, making interviews, uh, uh, all the all the all the member of the band instead of uh, you know uh, like this in in live streaming or going on stage and play and defend the album, isn't it a f frustrating situation? It sucks. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind. It really sucks. Yes, uh, because joining. A band like Nervosa was a dream since I was a teenager and I wanted to become a drummer in an accomplished metal band. And now that this has happened, you know, I, I'm really thankful that it happened, but I, can, I can't enjoy it to the fullest. Because as you said, one month in Malaga, it was heaven. I had the best time of my life. And then I had to come back to Greece and stay in home all day because we're in lockdown here. And now, yes, the album is released and... Um, you know, what is expected is that the band, after an album release, will go on a tour to promote it. But yeah. instead of that, yes, the only thing we can do is interviews and wait uh, for, you know, the vaccine <laughs> to happen or something. Yes, but, you know, interviews and live streams are cool, but what every musician wants most of all is playing live for people. This is the main purpose of music. Yeah. <clears throat> um, funny question for Eleni. Do you love Sepultura? I adore Sepultura. What a Brazilian band. Yes, I love Sepultura. Uh, I love the drumming in Sepultura. Igor Cavalera and Eloy Casagrande are some of my main influences. So, yes, I adore Sepultura as well. And uh, what are your uh, favorite uh, bands from Greece? Oh, uh, my top favorite is Septic Flesh. Uh, maybe you know them. Uh, yeah, of course. Who don't know uh, Septic Flesh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so them, number one. Um, and after that, uh, Rotting Christ, uh, Far Wind, Suicidal Angels, uh, some uh, smaller bands like uh, Need, Poem, Mother of Millions, uh, yeah, we have many, many bands in Greece, but the most well-known are Septic Place and Rotting Christ, of course. Yeah, hello, Yesin, um, uh, Yesin from Algeria. Hello, Kerim and Eleni, very great band. Uh, I saw Nervosa for the last time in Lyon, France. Uh, hope to see you again. Yeah, but uh, it was uh, Nervosa before Eleni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hope to come to France too soon as well now the the challenge is to to make forget the uh, the old uh, the uh, the old members now on stage i think first uh, challenge is uh, it's okay with the album because i think there was a lot of uh, critics and a lot of great 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 um, reviews metal hammer hard rock magazine who say that uh, this album is maybe one of the greatest the best uh, albums of nervosa uh, yes, yes, the, um, the reviews were overwhelming. It was awesome. I, since uh, last Friday, I'm um, reading reviews every day from different uh, magazines and websites, and the response is huge. And yes, I have seen that uh, most people said that this is the best album of Nervosa so far. Uh, you know, everyone you know, likes something different and has a different taste, so... I cannot speak for everyone. Uh, this is, you know, th there is not right and wrong. So, yeah, uh, I guess for us, the same goes to that me and Prika and even Mia consider it our best album, but someone else might like more Agony or Dark yeah. Mantle. It's different for everyone. But uh, the response of the people is insane and uh, the magazine. So, thank you all. Um, about septic flesh, yes, in said septic flesh was in Morocco two years ago, okay. And uh, she <laughs> had roots, bloody roots, um, yeah, yeah roots. Um, what, um, about the um, about the the album and um, about uh, about you, I forgot the question, I get a very <laughs> marvelous and very big question, but I forgot it. <laughs> Maybe I'll remember it. <laughs> Things happen. Um, tell me, um, 
Oh, we uh, we are beyond the time. It's okay if we continue. Yeah, I have a bit uh, more time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, I, um, tell me about you because um, you know when you when we saw the, the drummers, um, the drummers, you know, uh, maybe uh, they are all you know uh, very fit with very big muscles and things like this, and uh, you know. But uh, when I saw you, you know, um, in, um, in in the video clip and the photos, and uh, I, I saw you, um, you're not that archetype. <laughs> yes. So tell me, first first thing, why the jumps? Uh, how did did you come to to jumps? And um, what is your um, your um, you know? Um, your routine, you know, daily routine. So, uh, why the drums first? Um, yeah, yeah, it happened kind of randomly. Uh, I, I, I'm not from a musical family, so you know there wasn't any influence or something. I just started playing piano when I was seven, you know, because my mother yeah. wanted to take me to piano lessons just because of that. But I quickly became really bored of classical music. Uh, I wasn't listening to any music in particular back then until when I was 10, a um, friend of mine introduced me to metal and uh, specifically Slipknot. So when I listened to Slipknot for the first time, I was really blown away. And uh, I checked them on YouTube and I saw Joy Jordison play and I was so impressed. And um, I really wanted to try that because I'm a really weird person and I like to try all the things that are not made for me. Uh, you know, I'm not made uh, for skateboarding or drums or anything that is uh, made for a big guy or something, but I want to try the stuff. I don't know, I'm, I'm a really weird person. When I see something that people say, say to me, you can't do it because you're really small, I'm determined to do it. So I instantly decided to start playing drums. My mother did, wasn't very happy with that. It took me two years to convince her. And after two years, at the age of 12, I went uh, to my first drum lesson. And you know, after that, I never stopped playing actually. But uh, yeah, and at the beginning it was just for fun, but around 16 or 17, I just decided that I want to become a professional drummer because I don't like everything else, to be honest. I'm, really, I'm a really lazy person outside of music. I don't like anything else. So I decided that I'm gonna become a professional drummer, otherwise my life will be really miserable. Uh, so that's the whole drum journey. And my routine, um, the playing routine, is that uh, right now um, playing the Nervosa set list just to be prepared for the gigs when they happen. Um, oh, first of all, actually, I'm warming up for about 10 minutes. I play some basic uh, paradiddles just to warm up. And after that, yeah, I start with the hard things uh, instantly. I start with the Nervosa set list. After that, I work a bit on my blast beats and my double bass um and after that i i just uh want to become better at other musical styles outside of metal so i spend uh, around uh, two hours per day working on funk or gospel and other styles because i love music outside of metal too uh and yeah out of the drums i don't have any routine i don't work out as i told you i'm a really lazy person so yeah, I'm, I'm not living the best life for a drummer. I should go to the gym or something, but I'm not doing it yet. But at some point in my life, I should, I guess. I think so, because I, I saw you um, on uh, one of your videos on Instagram um, at Malaga when you were playing and, and uh, you stopped and you, you had to, 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 to come back. You said one minute and you were very exhausted. <laughs> Uh, I invite everyone to go to see that video uh, on um, on uh, the Eleni and other Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, actually, I was uh, really out of breath. Um, you know, uh, I had a kind of issue. I was recovering from an autoimmune thing I had, so my ah, okay. 
my energy was not the best during the summer. So this was actually one of the factors I was out of breath a lot of the time. But also I smoke a lot and I'm not working out. So these are also two factors that, you know, uh, prevent me from breathing more, I guess. Yeah, you're young, but uh, maybe uh, um, in the next 10 years or 20 years, uh, you had to <laughs> make a little bit uh, more uh, work workout. Uh, Sheva Rossi, um, tell us about you, Eleni. Do you study, works? Uh, you a drummer, but uh, do you have hobbies, other instruments? Uh, what books do you read? You play games? Uh, tell us everything, Eleni. Your name is Nota. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, I will answer it uh, really quickly, so I won't have to speak about myself a lot of the time. Uh, so, uh, about myself, I don't study, I finished my studies in 2014 when I graduated from uh, music school. I'm working as a drum teacher right now, I teach uh, people and children through Skype or in physical contact lessons. And I work in the studio as a session drummer. I record albums and songs for people. Um, other hobbies, I don't have these crazy hobbies. I um, My life is mostly music. So right now I'm trying to learn how to do video editing, just to make some more drum covers by myself. And other than that, no, I don't have any hobbies. I'm also trying to learn Spanish because of Nervosa. Uh, other instruments, uh, yeah, I played the piano for eight years and uh, I played the bass for two years, but I'm, I'm not very good at them. I stopped playing them for the last 10 years, so I'm really rusty in the piano and the bass. My main instrument is drums. Uh, books, I read pretty much anything that I happen to touch. I like an, every genre of you know literature. I like my favorite books are Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I like really fantasy, but also classical, like Charles Dickens and Franz Kafka. Uh, I don't play games actually. I'm not a gamer. I'm, I've never, I've never played uh, in my adult life. So no, I'm not a gamer. And yes, my last name is Nota. Actually, yeah, Nota means musical note in Greek. So yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, he tells us, uh, where are the other members? Uh, <laughs> call them to join live. Shem, that's not how it works. <laughs> 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 that's not how it works. And, um, you know, there's one in Brazil, the other one in Italy, the other one in Spain. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, I said that you uh, you play with uh, other uh, other bands uh, also. Um, you um, there's a, there's a band also that you you play with them um, from England and uh, there's another band I think in in Greece. Uh, it's uh, how is it? Um, as a permanent member, I only play in Nervosa right now. Some yeah. other things that are released are projects that I played as a session drummer. So, yeah, because I get this question all the time, like uh, you're playing in a thousand bands or something. And uh, as a member, I play only in Nervosa. All the other you know, projects are that work, work stuff. Uh, yeah, I uh, wrote the drums for a band in England. I wrote the drums for plenty of bands in Greece. So, yes, my name is always tagged in some kind of project, but I only play in Nervosa as a member. Okay, and uh, who is your, for you, the hugest drummer? Uh, Joey Georgeson from Sleepy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because he he inspired the whole generation of drummers, including me, um, and he changed drumming for everyone. So, yeah, even though, you know, he's not with Slipknot anymore, still his name is huge and it will still be for many, many years in the future, because he's one of the reasons why the new generation of drummers plays, plays this way. So yeah, I think he's the biggest drummer ever, for now at least. Um, you're not from, what do you think of Mike Portnoy? 
I many, love my many, many, many of people tell that Mike Portnoy is a germ of God, uh, uh, the god of germs. What do you think uh, about it? I don't disagree about it. Actually, if I had to put someone alongside Joy Jordison, I would say Mike Portnoy. I think uh, they have the same influence, both of them. They influence the, the same amount of people in the same way. Uh, but I just say Joy Jordison for me is the biggest because he's more uh, he's more closely to my personal taste in drumming. But yeah, Mike Portnoy is a huge drummer. Uh, one of the most technical drummers out there, but with a huge soul. And yeah, he's for me, he, he's one of the gods of drums. Yes. Um, what is your favorite band? Uh, do you know bands uh, from uh, Tunisia like uh, Yemergar, Mirath, Nawether, uh, Wrath of uh, Flames, Snooze, uh, Sound of Seraphim, Omination, Raven Legacy, Carta Gods? We have many bands. Uh, to be honest, uh, I think I know Mirath. I I think I've listened to a couple of their songs because I really remember this name. Apart from them, no, I'm really sorry. But uh, now that you wrote me some names, I will definitely check them out. And thank you for the suggestions. And my favorite bands are Slipknot, <laughs> Corn, uh, uh, Ginger, Arch Enemy, Children of Bodom. Uh, some of the you know most modern metal like uh, Architects, Bring the Horizon, yeah. and from the classics I really love uh, Iron Maiden, uh, Rainbow, mostly them. Yeah. And Sepultura. And Sepultura, yeah, of course. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Eleni. Thank you. Uh, it was very uh, a big pleasure uh, speaking with you. So. Um, what are you uh, what are you feeling now you're waiting 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 for the end of corona i think <laughs> oh yes it's a, like an endless wait for something well yes um i'm just counting the days <laughs> counting the days huh yes yeah yeah <clears throat> hope um hope you, uh, the, the the concert will uh, will go on now huh? and um um you didn't uh, Do you uh, do, do you play with the with the with the other members? Uh, you know, uh, there's uh, with uh, with internet with Skype. You know, um, not um, do rehearsals. Uh, uh, or, no. or is it difficult? Yeah, we haven't tried uh, actually because we said that uh, around spring we will meet in person again to do proper rehearsals. It's not very difficult because it's a two hour flight from each other. So we haven't uh, tried the Skype rehearsals because, you know, a normal a normal rehearsal is always better. And yeah. since we can do this, why not? Okay. Um, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Eleni, uh, for the for this interview. Thank ah, you yes, in. Hope all bands can play again and that you can come play in North Africa country. Hope so. Really can wait. Really can wait. Okay, so it was a very big pleasure having you and uh, good luck for the um, for for and uh, we we hope you the best and uh, I hope that this uh, album will um, uh, will be will how we say it uh, will will make a, um, a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure for me as well. And thank you for having me. And yeah, I hope to see you in Tunisia soon. And um, she have said, we wait for another album, girls. <laughs> <laughs> this will come too. Yeah. Thank you very much, Eleni. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Zanzana, l'émission métal.